In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up this REI Wonderland 6, and I'm also going to show you how to take it down, pack it up, give you all these setup and pack away timings, plus a few of my own personal tips on how to do so. After unboxing this REI Wonderland, here's everything that I found in the box. First up, I got this black carry bag, the tent body, a room divider, this green rainfly, poles in a separate carry bag, plus stakes and guidelines in another smaller carry bag. After I took all the poles out of the carry bag, I got these five poles, and I'll explain them to you a little later. I also got 18 stakes plus eight of these red guidelines. And now to set up this REI Wonderland, first grab the tent body, lay it on the ground, and position it the way you prefer it to be. To do so, just look for the two doors on the tent right here. Both these doors are exactly the same. After that, stake down the four corners of the tent body lightly, and I recommend doing this for an easier setup. There's this orange webbing at each corner that you can push your stakes through, and all four corners will have this same orange webbing. Now grab the first pole that we need, which is this pole, and the two ends of the pole are color-coded black. Go to the tent and look for the grayish color pole sleeve that runs across the length of the tent right here. Put the black pole together and sleeve it into this gray pole sleeve. This is what it'll look like when you're done sleeving it through. Then go to one end of the black pole and look for this black webbing, which will have a grommet in it. Just insert the tip of the pole into the grommet like this. After that, go to the other end of the black pole, look for the other black webbing with the grommet, and do the exact same thing. When both pole tips are secured to both grommets, like so, the black pole should span the entire length of the tent, like this. Next, pick up one of these poles, the ends of which are color-coded orange. There are two of these poles, they're exactly the same, but we need just one of them for now. Then go to one width of the tent, like what I'm doing here, and look for a pole sleeve there, which should run the width of the tent. It's grey in colour, and I'm a little surprised it's not colour-coded orange like the poles. But you gotta put the orange pole together, and then insert it into the grey pole sleeve, and here's what it'll look like when you've done so. Then go to one end of the orange pole, and insert the tip of that pole into the orange grommet here. I like that at least the webbing here is color-coded orange, even if the pole sleeve isn't. Now, go to the middle, not the end, the middle of the orange pole, because that's where the pole sleeve is. And I recommend picking the tent up using the pole sleeve instead of just the pole itself. And then feed as much pole as possible through the sleeve while propping the tent up if you need to by grabbing the other pole until you can bend down and secure the other end of that same pole into the grommet at the corner as well. When you're done, the orange tips of the poles should be secured to the orange grommets at these two corners of the tent. And there are these orange pole clips as well, two on each side of the pole, so four all together for this pole, and they're really easy to just clip onto the orange pole. Now we need one of these poles with these hubs, so grab the pole with more pole segments, which is this one. This is called the Y pole. Let me put this entire pole together, and now that it's together, this is the reason it's called the Y pole. You see it, right? Now grab the bottom of the Y and insert this end through this hole at the top of the Wonderland. It should go through this hole like this. After that, secure the top of the Y, this side with the two ends into the grommets at the bottom of the tent, and you can also attach the four pole clips on that side of the tent at the same time. Here's what the grommets look like up close. They're gray in color, so are the four pole clips, gray in color, and that's the hub over there. Then just leave the Y pole as it is for now and grab the other pole with this hub. This is called the V pole. Let me put it together. And I think now you can probably see why it's called the V pole. With the V pole set up, Go to the other length of the tent and insert the two ends of the V into the two grommets at the bottom of the tent. Basically the same thing we just did with the Y pole a couple of minutes before. Then grab the V pole, stand it upright, grab the other end of the Y pole and insert the end of the Y pole into the hub of the V pole. This is a close-up shot of the grommets of the V pole. This is the hub of the V pole and this is where the Y pole goes into the hub of the V pole. I know the Wonderland tent looks kind of funny now, so just go ahead and attach the rest of the pole clips to both the V-pole and the Y-pole. 
Altogether, there should be 12 pole clips. So six pole clips on each side of the tent, four at the bottom here and another two at the top here. Now grab the last pole, which is the remaining orange pole, and the setup is exactly the same as the other orange pole. Just put the pole together, insert it through this grey pole sleeve, secure one end of the orange pole to the orange grommet at the bottom of the tent, and then the other end to the other orange grommet in the corner too. And this orange pole goes up a lot easier than the first orange pole. Now attach the pole clips. They're really easy to attach. I can do it one-handed and there are two of these orange clips on each side of the orange pole. Then zip both the doors up. They're really easy to zip up even with just one hand and then you can restake the four corners of the tent if you want to. Then grab another six stakes. First, stake down the four grey webbings, two at each length of the tent, and the other two stakes are for the two doors, one stake under each door like so. Now it's time to grab the rain fly and we're gonna set this up. What I like to do is to just take one corner of the rain fly, it has this orange webbing, and next I slide this corner of the rain fly just above the horizontal black pole at the top of the tent. And without letting go of that corner, I just walk around the tent and drag the entire rain fly along with me until the rain fly gets pulled up above the tent, like so. The rainfly may snag a little bit on the pole, so you might have to go back and forth about once, maybe twice to undo the snags, but this is how I usually get the rainfly up on my own without any help at all. Anyway, I put the rainfly up the wrong way and you can tell because you can see the steam tape here and all the red velcro strips which are facing upwards and that's the wrong way. They should be facing towards the tent instead. So here's me taking it down and putting it back up again by doing the exact same thing, sliding the corner of the rainfly just above the horizontal black pole and dragging the entire rainfly with me as I walk around the tent. Now before the rainfly falls off or the wind blows it away, I usually try to attach the four orange corners of the rainfly to the orange webbing at the bottom of the tent. So all four corners are color coded orange, so you can easily tell where to attach them. Also, another way to check that you have the ring fly on the correct way is to check the REI logos. They should be facing outwards, one on each length of the tent. And now go to one width of the tent and slide the ring fly fabric over the orange pole. Do so for both sides. Make sure the ring fly fabric is covering the pole and here's a close up of what it should look like. Then at the top of the tent, there will be another black grommet and this is to be attached to the tip of the black pole too. Let me show you a close-up shot of this other black grommet. Basically, you gotta just slide it onto the tip of the black pole like this. And each end of the black pole should be attached to two different grommets, one from the tent and the other from the rain fly. And of course, do the exact same thing with the other width of the tent. First slide the rain fly fabric over the other orange pole and then attach the black grommet to the black pole. The second grommet is usually a little bit tighter and you might have to use a little bit of strength to get it secured. Now to secure the rain fly even more, attach all the red velcro straps you saw a few minutes ago when I put the rain fly on the wrong way. And for the orange pole, there are two velcro straps for each side of the pole. The other orange pole has another four velcro straps and the black poles also have velcro straps. There are three on each side as you can see here from the inside of the tent, but I usually use only the bottom two on each side. So all together there are 14 straps to secure, but you can do less if you want if it's not too windy. Now I like to tighten the four corners of the rainfly so that it's a bit more snug and it won't move around too much in the wind. To do so, just pull down on the rainfly webbing with one hand and use your other hand to pull on the other side of the webbing. And if you want to loosen it instead, just pull on the buckle. At this point, we've already used 10 stakes so we're left with 8, so grab another 4. Use two at one width of the tent to stake down these awning things. I like to stake each side of the awning till it's a little bit taut and not too loose and it provides a little bit of shade from the sun. And use the other two stakes to stake down the awning at the other width of the tent, like so. And now we're down to four stakes while having eight guidelines at the same time, so we're short on stakes. Let's just use the eight guidelines first. Since I have only eight, I'm gonna attach all of them using just a simple hitch to the widths of the tent. And here's me staking out the tent with these eight guidelines. 
But on top of these eight guy lines, each length of the tent has actually three more guy out points in the middle, so six more altogether for which I don't have guy lines. So you can just buy more guy lines, six more to be specific, and stake these points down too, if you need to, especially if it's a little windy. If you want to completely guy out the tent, I'm short about 10 stakes, so you gotta buy those as well. Also, if you forget any of this, the instructions are sewn onto the carry bag. You're pretty good, honestly, and I actually used these instructions to set this wonderland up the first time with no problems at all. And now here's a full time lapse of me setting up the entire REI Wonderland 6 on my own with no help from anyone else. But before I let you know how long this entire setup took me, if you found this setup video and my tips helpful, it would mean so much if you could help me hit that like button. Thank you, and I really appreciate it. Moving along the entire setup process, including staking and guiding out the entire tent, took me about 19 and a half minutes. But I've set up and taken my wonderland down at least half a dozen times, so just take note that on your first go setting up this tent, you'll take a little longer, probably more than 20 minutes, maybe even 30 minutes to figure it out. At least that was my experience when I used the instructions. For the takedown and pack away of this REI Wonderland 6, it's pretty simple, just the opposite of the setup, and I never had any issues. In fact, taking down the Wonderland takes just 7 minutes, which is really short. But it was the pack up back into the carry bag that actually took longer. Let me show you how to do it first. As for the rainfly, I pack it up by just folding it in half continuously while tucking all the guy lines in nicely until it looks about a nice small enough size, like so. I usually just eyeball this. As for the tent body, I usually just fold it in half about four times if I'm not wrong, because I like to get it down small enough to be able to fit back into the carry bag like this with wise. After that, I put the rainfly on the tent body, I roll both of them up together, tie them up as well, and then stuff them back into the carry bag. And of course, all the poles and the stakes go back into their separate bags before going back into the outermost carry bag, after I've already packed up the tent and rainfly. And this pack away took almost 10 minutes for a total timing of 16 and a half minutes for the entire takedown and pack away. That's because for such an expensive tent, I think the carry bag can definitely be improved. I don't know why they got rid of the kingdom carry bag, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in this full review right here, where I go through every single thing you need to know about this REI Wonderland 6, like spaciousness, features, rain test, and loads more. Thank you for watching this setup video, and I'll see you in the next one.